of the, the inflow cannula. But actually, uh, the, uh, the question is that how can we use this knowledge? Uh, for sure, we can uh, create a 3D model uh, and uh, we can say that uh, this is a perfect uh, a position of the hours, but actually, how can we use it? Uh, here we can see the 3D model. This is a holographized uh, left ventricle. There is the device uh, and every detail of the heart. Uh, and after, as I said, uh, we create the, the flow simulation and after we create an exoskeleton. Uh, this is um, um, a perfect uh, uh, well-fitting uh, shape of the uh, uh, epicardial surface of the heart. And uh, we also uh, create a guiding tube for this, uh, uh, for the the, uh, the the coring knife, and this guiding tube, we can use it. Here we can see there is the exoskeleton. This is the first uh, model. This is a uh, uh, the first model of the exoskeleton. Here we can see that this is perfectly fit on the surface of the heart. Here is the the, the apical coring knife, and here is the coring tube, the guiding tube for this coring knife. Uh, actually, uh, uh, it is a pending patent. Uh, and we also uh, published it. So if you are interested, you can read about it more. Yes, and it, uh, here we can see that how we use it in, during the operation. There is the exoskeleton. We put it on the surface of the heart and there you can see the, the coring, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the guiding tube. We make the position of it. And after we put, uh, the coring knife into the guiding tube and after make uh, the, the coring procedure. And after the operation is conventional, so we put uh, insert the elbets uh, inside the left ventricle. So uh, for sure, we uh, uh, made uh, a small uh, patient group. This is a pattern group, and we compared it with the propensity score after the propensity score matching, and we saw that uh, our results is uh, uh, has a, a better uh, outcome than the, the the control group. Here, yes, and for sure because we created a 3D model of the heart, and we 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 we, we can say that what is the perfect angle of it. For sure, after the operation, uh, we can do uh, also a CT angiography, and we can create the 3D model of the heart and the LS as well. And after we can compare the pre-operative planning angle of the inflow cannula with. Uh, the post-operative results, and uh, we see that uh, there is no uh, significant differences between the prior planning angle and the post-op uh, uh, results uh, in case of the angle of the airwets. Uh, and when we uh, compare it with the control group, we saw that uh, there is a higher uh, the differences between the ideal uh, angle uh, and uh, the results angle. And uh, there is also, we can see that the standard deviation is higher in the control group. That means that uh, the angle is uh, more variable because of the, the, we don't have a guiding tool, uh, to, uh, tool during the operation. Yes. The second one is the congenital cardiac surgery. There is the major autopulmonary coronary artery. That means that this uh, little uh, boy and girls, boys and girls, have um, atrotic uh, um, pulmonary arteries. Uh, so that's why the blood supply of the uh, the, the lung uh, are origins from the aorta. Uh, the Operation technique uh, for uh, the, the correction of it is uh, that we have to collect the collateral arteries and we have to uh, put it together and uh, uh, unifocalize uh, these uh, collateral arteries. The big challenge is that during the operation we cannot find uh, properly the collateral arteries. Uh, so that's why there is also a CT angiography. Firstly, we uh, segmented the AO 
aorta and the collateral arteries. And after we segmented the trachea and the bron bronchi artery as well, uh, here we can see this uh, blue uh, uh, segmented part of the CT. And after we create, uh, we, we, we get uh, 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 angiography uh, for the proper uh, uh, vascular for the proper uh, segmentation of the uh, collateral arteries, and after we create a 3D model uh, of uh, the uh, major autopercal collateral arteries. Yes, how? Again, the question is that how can we use it during the operation? For sure, we can print it out. We use the surgical uh, grade. Uh, 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 resins. Uh, here we can see uh, the, the the printing process and after the post processing uh, uh, part, and after we can sterilize it. And when we sterilize it, we can use it during the operation. It is just like a map. Uh, we can see that where is the collateral arteries and how can we find it, uh, what is the direction, what is the, the, the deep uh, inside the, the, the tissue. Yes, uh, yes. So it is an absolutely state-of-art diagnostic methods that we can create a personalized uh, operation for these uh, uh, children. Yes, and the last one is the straight back syndrome. That means that uh, these uh, uh, people have um, a severe uh, spine deformation. So that's why the, uh, the uh, distance between the vertebrae and uh, the sternum is too uh, small. In this case, this is a 10 years old boy uh, and uh, only one and a half a centimeter is this distance between the sternum, posterior side of the sternum and the ventral side of the, the vertebrae. So that's why uh, this uh, patient uh, ha has a severe dyspnea. Uh, here we can see the bronchio, uh, br bronchograph uh, of this patient uh, in the postoperative period. Uh, and here we can see in the preoperative period, uh, sorry for the slides. And here we can see the 3D uh, model of uh, uh, the patient. And uh, here we can see the really uh, small and the really narrow uh, trachea uh, case. Yes, and uh, here we can see there is a, no, sorry. Uh, we printed out this uh, medical device. This is the elevation between the, the, the uh, costa, between the cost, uh, between the, 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 vert, uh, the costa, yes. Uh, so that's why we uh, put it inside. And after this, elevate the sternum and uh, this pressure uh, into the trachea. Uh, uh, decrease. So that's why the lumen of the, the bronchus is, uh, was uh, bigger. Yes. And thanks to Dr. Jolt uh, to print uh, out uh, this uh, medical device with peak polyethylator cathode. Yes, here we can see the intraoperative pictures. Here we can see the 10 years old boy uh, with a severe back uh, deformation. And here we can see that how we used during the operation this medical device. There is a hole for the sutures and uh, the surgeon uh, uh, put uh, the, the, the suture into this hole and after uh, Yes, here we can see put inside between the two uh, costae. And after with the suture, we can stabilize it. And because uh, it just like when we uh, take a deep breath, uh, the distance between the costae is increasing. So that's why the sternum uh, going up. Uh, so that's why uh, the, the pressure into the trachea uh, uh, decrease. So, yes, and after here we can see when we, how we uh, stabilize it. Yes, and here is the postoperative results of uh, bronchoscopy. And here we can keep, here we can keep compare it with the preoperative uh, bronchoscopy pictures.
Yes, and thank you for your uh, kind attention. Here we can see this is our uh, group at the Sanovay uh, 3D Center. Uh, and thank you. And if you have any question after this uh, session, I try to answer it. Thank you very much. I actually recognize another person on this picture is Daniel, uh, who's in the focusing on the dental side of things, right? Uh, Dr. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Uh, Awesome. So we have some questions in the box, but if you know if the speakers feel like they're directly focusing on your presentation, you can go ahead and type in your answer. Otherwise, we'll save it at the end. Um, I'm going to move on to the next speaker. Thank you so much, Dr. Barbas. Um, I'm going to switch to Dr. Anwar, who is now here. Okay, awesome. He is very local. Actually, we've known each other for many years. He is also. Um, expert in cardiology. He's a pediatric cardiologist, but also he has another role. He founded not just one, but two 3D printing center in hospitals. One is in WashU and now at UCSF. So um, Shafkat, I'll let you take over now. Thank you, Johnny. And thank you again uh, to you and your group for inviting me. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, you may want to be in presentation mode for your slides. Uh, yeah, let's switch to that right now. How's that looking? Yep, perfect. Okay, great. Well, you know, it's been an honor to be invited to speak here. I've been a, um, a member of 3D Heals for some time and love the work that you guys are doing to spread this knowledge. And what I'm hoping to share this morning is uh, more uh, a little bit of our perspective on in-hospital 3D printing and a little bit more broadly, uh, some of these 3D plus technologies we're using uh, at UCSF where I'm based. Uh, here are my disclosures. And the objectives for my talk today are very straightforward. I will spend a brief amount of time discussing the what and why of 3D plus technologies. And then I'll focus on the how of integrating a 3D plus program within an academic medical center. So what is 3D plus? Well, 3D plus is a suite of technologies that encompasses 3D printing, virtual surgical planning, and the use of advanced visualization techniques, such as the use of augmented virtual or mixed reality in taking care of patients with complex medical conditions. And together with medical experts who are part of a growing sub subspecialty, uh, this is a powerful new technology in cardiology that can be used to help our patients. So why 3D technologies? Well, simply put, humans are three-dimensional and four-dimensional creatures, and our hearts are moving around the world in 3D and 4D space. Now, over time, we've become really good, I think, at reconstructing these two-dimensional images in our minds to plan for their medical or surgical care. However, I think a better method may be to just print out the models in highly accurate form and put it in the hands of our surgeons or proceduralists and let them hold the anatomy and practice the procedure. This may lead to better outcomes for our patients. And there's data to support this. And whether you're a trainee or an early career physician or experts or patients and their caregivers, I think this technology offers additive advantages for everyone. My talk in particular will deal with the topic of integrating 3D plus into an academic medical center. And when I think of this topic, this proverb comes to mind. If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And this will be the theme uh, for my talk. Essentially, we're in a large complex medical system. And to build a sustainable 3D plus program, I think we really need to approach this as a medical institution. But that is very vague and uh, probably a little intimidating. So let me uh, see if I can break it down to its parts. Um, a 3D plus center is successful if we can serve the core mission of an academic medical center. And I think all of us who are working at academic centers uh, have in common these missions. We're dedicated to clinical excellence. We want to advance the education of our trainees. We are hopefully engaged in high-level research and innovation, and we're dedicated to service and leadership in our field. And I think the foundation of any academic medical center is collaboration. 
I think of a Treaty Plus Center the same way. And please allow me to share some particulars to help make the point. The other concept that I think about is culture eats policies and procedures for lunch any day of the week. So in order for a Treaty Plus Center to be sustainable in the long run, I think it has to be a part of the culture of the Okay, let's dive into some specifics. I'd like to share the story from our center at UTSF uh, to provide some examples that may be helpful. Um, I also founded the 3D Printing Center at my former institution, Washington University in St. Louis, where we had a similar experience. So in August 2018, specialists from the Pediatric Heart Center Orthopedics and Radiology at UCSF came together and we won a strategic initiative grant uh, from the School of Medicine to start our Center for Advanced 3D Plus Technologies. We started building in fall uh, and winter of 2018. And in winter of 2018, we were fortunate to win a separate grant for the Pediatric Heart Center. By February of 2019, we have printed our first clinical case for surgical use. Uh, at this time, I was printing with an external service as I did not have an in-house staff. And while they did excellent clinical work, the turnaround time could be as high as two weeks. Later that year and in early 2020, we hired our own in-house staff. And now I'm fortunate to work with a full-time 3D engineer here, Michael Bunker. But then things ground to a halt from the clinical standpoint in February 2020, when we, just like the rest of the world, grapple with COVID-19. And we had to pivot quickly and find other ways to help with the effort. Um, we kept working on our cardiac modeling. And um, by March of 2020, we had printed our first cardiac case. And this was case eight for us. And currently our turnaround time um, could be as low as two days um, if needed. Um, thankfully, in San Francisco, things started looking better towards uh, summer of 2020. And um, as our hospital started um, doing elective cases and cases at full volume,